in a graph to fit a narrative in events. Again, I have to emphasize that you should first make sense of each graph in a problem before you try to match it to the description. So in this first set of graphs, we are looking at the distance to campsite. And keep in mind, some of these problems will say from. So those are two very different things. But let's make sense of this. Distance to campsite. So if the distance to the campsite is increasing, that means that a person is moving away from the campsite. If the distance to the campsite stays the same, that means a person is not moving away from it or getting closer to the campsite. If the distance to the campsite decreases, that means a person is getting closer to the campsite. So let's recap. Here we have somebody moving away from the campsite, staying the same distance away, and then moving back to the campsite. Second graph, we have a person moving towards the campsite, going back away, and then staying at that same distance. Third graph, we have a person staying at the same distance away, moving further away, and then staying at that distance away. Lastly, we have a person moving away from the campsite, staying at the same distance away, and then starting to move back. So let's read the description. Austin is hiking toward his campsite at a constant, constant pace. So do not be confused or misled by this constant. The focus here is that Austin is hiking toward his campsite. So which graph shows moving to the campsite? In this case, we actually only have one option. The second graph is the only graph that starts moving towards the campsite. Now let's make sure that the rest of the graph actually fits the story before we jump to conclusions in case we thought of something incorrectly initially. So next we have a few kilometers from the campsite he sees a snake and turns and runs the other way. Minutes later he sits to rest for a while. So again Austin is moving towards the campsite. He turns back around because of the snake and then stops for to rest for a while. So at that point he's no longer moving closer or further from the campsite. Let's take a look at the second part of this. So now, amount of water in pool. First, the amount of water in the pool is increasing. It is then staying the same and then decreasing. In the second graph, the amount of water in the pool stays the same and then starts increasing, so it's filling up. In the third graph, we have the amount of the water decreasing, so it's being emptied, and then it's increasing, so it's being filled, and then it stays the same. So no water is being put in or taken out. Lastly, we have the water in the pool staying the same and then increasing. So water be is being put in and then decreasing. So water is being taken out. So let's read the description. Throughout last month, the Chang family's pool was only half full of water. Three weeks ago, Mrs. Chang filled up the pool with water. Since then, the pool has gone back to half full due to a slow leak. So let's start with Chang, fam Chang family's pool was only half full. So all the graphs, or at least three of the graphs, start somewhere in the middle. So we can take a look at these two or these three graphs here. But keep in mind, this might be the graph as well. Now let's focus on the descriptions. So it's half full. Then three weeks ago, Mrs. Chang filled the pool with water so first it stays at a certain level and then it's being filled so here this graph is staying at a certain level then it's being filled so is this one it stays at a certain level then it's being filled but what comes after that the pool has gone back to half full so the water starts going out of the pool it starts decreasing due to a slow leak so the last graph is the one that would fit the level of the pool is the same it's then filled with water, and then the leak causes the level of the water to go back to its original. 